If you asked a thousand developers what makes a good programmer, some of the most common responses you're going to get are speed, they're very quick at solving problems and very quick at typing, they have lots of algorithm knowledge, for example, they can solve difficult leak code problems, they're always programming it in their spare time, they're either working on side projects or they're working on open source software, and that they're always able to use the latest and greatest bleeding edge technology without any problems at all. Now, all of these things are great to have, but in my opinion, those are not what make you a great programmer. Instead, there are three things that I think a great programmer needs. They need quality, communication, and learning. And in this video, I'm gonna to explain to you what all three of those mean. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And the very first thing I wanna talk about is the first quality that I think makes a good programmer and that is quality. Now, the one thing that a lot of people think is that quantity is actually what makes a good programmer. The faster you can solve problems and crank out code, the better of a programmer you are. It's really easy to see why this misconception happens because in a company, if someone gives you 10 tasks to complete and you complete all 10 of them, while your coworker only completes five of them in that same amount of time, your manager is obviously gonna think, wow, this person that did all 10 tasks is easily twice as effective as the person that did the only five of the tasks. But this is entirely wrong because generally the quicker you write code, the lower quality that code is. And this actually comes to bite you later on because the person that did those 10 tasks really quickly may have got them all done really quickly to start with. But a few months down the road, you may realize that this code is really buggy. They didn't write any tests for their code. So now all these bugs are coming up. They're costing the company time. And most importantly, they're costing the company money from lost revenue due to these bugs and due to the time that they have to pay programmers to fix this code. So while you had initially got these 10 tasks done really quickly, the person that only got five tasks done, their code is well tested, well written, it has less bugs, and is overall going to take less time to maintain versus the person that wrote all 10 of those tasks very quickly. This is a huge problem I personally ran into when I was first getting started as a programmer. I was always one of the faster people on the team that I was working on, but my code wasn't the highest quality. It usually wasn't very well tested and it was definitely missing a bunch of edge cases in the code, which is something that if I spent more time and focused on quality, I would be able to focus on solving out all those different edge cases and really making sure I write a robust test suite for my code, which is something that's really important to do. So instead of focusing on quantity, I recommend you focus on quality when you're writing out your code. The biggest factors to look for are writing clean code that's easy to read easy to maintain, is well tested, and considers many of the edge cases that you're going to run into. If you do that, it doesn't matter if it's going to take you longer to write your code, because in the long run, you're actually going to save time with the higher quality code. Now, the next quality that really good programmers have is communication. I know this sounds really counterintuitive because when you think of a programmer, you think of someone in a dark basement by themselves writing code on a computer super furiously, but really, programmers work on teams. And these teams of people need to be able to communicate effectively with each other to be able to write code as a team because no one is building large projects on their own. I mean, think about things like Microsoft, Netflix, Amazon. These companies have thousands and thousands of developers that are all working on one single project. So you need to be able to have really good communication across your entire network of developers and across the small teams you work on in order to make sure that you're effectively building out the right code. This is easily the skill that junior developers most overlook but it's probably one of the most important skills that hiring managers look for when hiring a new developer. Because when the hiring manager interacts with the developer, they wanna see how your communication skills are because that's the main way they're going to be interacting with you. Also, the team leads and the other developers on the team also need to be able to communicate with you. So you're gonna be communicating during the interview process, you're gonna be communicating during the job process. So having those communication skills is not only important for the job, but also for landing the job, which is one of the hardest things to do as a junior developer. Now, luckily, a lot of these skills are kind of second nature that you're going to be using anyway, such as just being a nice person. Make sure you clearly articulate everything you're talking about and explain things in an easy to understand way. But some of the more nuanced pieces are going to be make sure that you don't always explain things super technically. Because depending on your audience, you need to be able to talk in either a technical or a non-technical way. When you're talking between your team of developers, it's okay to use really technical terms and programming jargon. But if you're trying to talk to a manager about something, you don't want to use all these complex programming jargon because they're not going to understand what you're talking about. So be know to make sure you can convert everything you're doing into technical and non-technical communication while still getting the same point across is really important because a lot of the people you talk to as a developer don't actually know developer talk and don't have developer skills. So you need to be able to explain things to them in a way that is easy to understand for them while still getting across all the important points that you need them to understand. Now, the last skill that a developer needs to have is learning. 
And by that, I essentially mean that you need to learn how to learn. I know that sounds crazy, but most people never really spend time focusing on how you learn, and instead you focus on learning as much as you can. But if you spend some time focusing on how you learn and how to learn quickly, you're going to be a much better developer much quicker. And that's because as a developer, you spend pretty much your entire life constantly learning something new. Whether it's new technologies, new frameworks, new languages, new ways of thinking, there's always something new coming out inside of programming. So it's really important that you focus on learning how to learn at an early stage in your programming career because it's really going to catapult your career and move you so far ahead of other people as you're going down the journey. Now I have a couple different videos on this topic of how to actually learn. I'm going to link them in the cards and description for you to check out if you want some more detail. But really the most important concepts when it comes to learning how to learn is you need to learn how to learn quickly and effectively. Those are the two key things. I mean, obviously that's what you want to do, but if you can find a technique that allows you to effectively learn knowledge where you can retain it and regurgitate it and reuse it whenever you need while still being able to do that rather quickly, that's incredibly important. My main philosophy for learning how to learn is to not learn everything. If you're going to learn a new framework or technology or language, don't worry about learning every single minute detail. Instead, learn essentially the bare minimum that you can in order to get up and running with something. And that's not going to take you very long, but but it's going to get you like 75% of the way there for using something. So you can learn about 20-ish percent of the knowledge of something and be able to use it at about 80% capacity versus learning 100% of something to do it at 100% capacity. I mean, just by following this technique, you can instead learn five different tools and languages at about 80% proficiency versus learning one thing at 100% proficiency. So if you want to be able to learn a lot of things quickly, this is the method that I recommend you doing. And as you start to use that tool more and more, obviously you can spend some time specializing it and really starting to learn where your gaps in the knowledge are. But just by using something, you're going to learn those skills on your own. And that right there is the three qualities that every single developer should have. If you want to check out those videos I mentioned on how you can actually start learning things better and quicker, I'm going to have those linked right over here. And with that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.